Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this conference and for giving me the opportunity to tell you about what we are doing with uh, Imagine for Margot. So, um, my daughter Margot was uh, diagnosed when she was 14 with a glioblastoma. And uh, when she was diagnosed, the doctors just told us that, you know, uh, this kind of disease, there is no drugs uh, to, cure your, to cure my, my uh, daughter. And uh, actually, this is where the fight started. Uh, no treatment, no, nothing effective to uh, be able to, to cure her. So this is, this is actually when we discovered that she was giving a very old chemo that was being there for 30 years, that was uh, given to adults. We tried, you know, desperately to find any clinical trail, any innovative treatment. There was nothing, nothing for, uh, for a child of her age also, no, no clinical trail. So, uh, we, uh, so Margot was uh, part of the 35,000 children uh, in Europe that are diagnosed every year with uh, cancer, children and adolescents. Uh, it's uh, 2,500 uh, 2, children in, uh, in France. And in France, 500 children are dying from cancer every, every year. So that is uh, more than one child every day is dying from cancer in, uh, in France. Uh, and Margot was uh, part of them. Uh, she was treated at uh, Gustave Roussy in, uh, in France, and this is where I met Professor Gilles Vassal, who is the head of ITCC uh, that uh, Pamela just talked about. It's this uh, European uh, group of, uh, of academics developing new drugs on uh, early uh, phase treatment for the children. And speaking with Gilles Vassal, he explained to me uh, ITCC and the importance of uh, being together in Europe to develop new drugs so that you have more expertise, so that you have uh, more uh, children in the, uh, in the clinical trail, whereas you don't have to work in silos and be on your side. So this is why we decided to uh, create Imagine for Margot. To, dev to help ITCC developing European uh, research program and not to, fi not to fund only a French program, but really a European program. So what, uh, what can parents do to help developing uh, new drugs? I'm going to tell you about uh, two main actions that we are doing. The first one is about cooperation and awareness, and that's the European Pediatric Platform. And the second uh, action is about funding and finding European projects. Actually, it's, uh, it, it started in London. Uh, it was at the end of uh, 2011, in December, where I was invited. I had just created Imagine for Margot. It was just the week before. And I was uh, invited to, uh, to tell about my experience at a meeting in London where you had, for the first time in the, in the room, academics, industry, regulators, and parents' organization. <coughs> and all together, talking about the, where we are in terms of drug developments, what is the status, and what are the next steps. And uh, some parents, like I can see Karen and Kevin, were there in, in the room, and maybe uh, some of you were also there, uh, you can see. And if you, if you remember, it was not only cold in London that day, but it was really freezing in that room because of the people who were there uh, not really wanted to communicate between them, and uh, staying in their silo, and, you know, we were there together, but nothing was already happening. There was just discussion, listening, and that was it. And I said, oh my God, we really have much of work to do here. Uh, because I was, I'm not a doctor, I'm not in the medical world, and I was just discovering what was going on. And then uh, two years later, there was another meeting uh, in Paris, the, the, and, and there I can really tell you that we, we have moved one step further. 
we had more cooperation, we had also more people, more interactive uh, communication between the people. And this is where we decided to create four working groups, for specific working groups, in order to help developing new drugs. And the decision was taken to, uh, to create this European pediatric platform. And what is specific to this pediatric platform is that uh, in each of the group, you have representatives from pharma, from uh, academics, parents, and, um, and regulators, EMA. So all together working on different subjects to develop new drugs. Uh, the pediatric uh, oncology uh, platform has been published. You can, uh, you can uh, have more details about, um, about it in the European Journal of Cancer in the January uh, 15. It will tell you in details what we want to do and uh, what is the goal of each different working group. Because I won't have the time to tell you uh, a lot today. Uh, after working one year in the different working group, we had um, in Vienna at the beginning of the year, in February, we had a meeting to show the first result of the platform. And then having the discussion together, we actually um, uh, rearranged the groups. So now we have three, three groups. One is leading by uh, academia. The first group is uh, the way to uh, actually implement better the European regulation. Pamela told you that we have a pediatric regulation uh, voted in 2007. Uh, this regulation is not working properly. Uh, as Pamela said, it, it's, uh, it is when you look, when pharma is going to develop on adult drugs, uh, then it has, they have to uh, look at uh, the possibility to uh, benefit the children with that drugs. So, uh, and there, the problem is that they can get derogation, they can get, uh, industry can get waivers if the finality of the drug is for an adult disease and not a children's disease, which is always the case in oncology drugs because pharma is developing drugs for uh, lung cancer, for breast cancer, uh, they are not developing drugs for children. This is not financially interesting for them. So they get waivers, and uh, if this regulation is really good in terms of spirit of the law, because uh, it obliges a pharma to go and see if there is a benefit in children, and it works in other diseases for pediatric, because this is not only for oncology. For oncology drugs, it's not working. Okay, so this, this group is, work, is uh, working on how to better implement this pediatric regulation that is supposed to be changed in a two years time, but we don't want to wait for that. We need to work together on how to, uh, from today, implement better the, the regulation. So uh, it's like looking at mechanism of action of the drugs, uh, prioritization of the drugs on these kind of topics. The second group is the one I'm uh, leading. It's, uh, it's actually to find some incentive to develop some specific pediatric drugs. So we are not in your developing adult drugs and then you look in children. There it's spe drugs specific to children and uh, or to reposition that uh, some drugs that have failed in adults. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about uh, this later. And the third group is implementation of some long-term measure that for the children and adolescents who are receiving those new drugs. It is also important to, to look at the uh, long-term follow-up of the of those children. What uh, I would like to mention also is that in each of the group, we have parents uh, organization being there, and we are still looking for some uh, parents to integrate the group. So if you are in interested to know more, about uh, this, in this platform, you can, uh, you can look at the, you can look, uh, at the um, publication, but you can also ask me uh, any more details. So tell you more about this group two, the new incentives. Uh, why we are doing that? I told you before the European regulation is not working as much as, uh, as we want it to, and today we, we uh, do not have uh, new drugs specific for children that have been developed with European regulation. 
Well, our, there's an initiative which has been uh, actually voted in uh, from the US, which is that is called Creating Hope Act. And uh, this act is actually uh, incentive, is giving incentive to pharma to develop specific drugs for the children. So that's the main difference with European regulation. There, uh, the pharma uh, is getting a priority review voucher if they are developing specific drugs for the children from the beginning. They get the incentive from the beginning and not at the end like for uh, the European regulation. And they, so we were saying, okay, well, fine, uh, there's this creating hope, but what is it going to be for, uh, for children with cancer? Is it going to be like the European regulation and we will not see any drugs for, for, the, uh, for oncology? And actually there was uh, one specific drug approved uh, recently for neuroblastoma. Uh, uh, to be very honest with you, it was, this development was not really due to that regulation because it was already started before. Uh, but still, uh, we have now these new drugs and we can also push, it's giving us, you know, some, uh, uh, an example to push for that, uh, that, that direction, to have specific drugs. So the idea here in that group is not to copy past the Creating Hope Act, but really to see how we can adapt this regulation in Europe. So like the other groups, we, uh, in my group you have academics people, you have people from industry, from the pediatric committee at the EMA and the parents organization from different uh, European countries. And what we said, okay, uh, we are going, to, what, how are we going to start with uh, incentives? So we, we made a questionnaire uh, that we sent to the industry and we asked them four simple questions. The questions are why actually you don't invest into drug development for pediatric cancer? What are the obstacles? Why you don't do it? What could be done to do it? Would you support some incentive like creating Hope Act in the US? And what kind of incentive would attract your company to develop drugs, uh, uh, pediatric drugs against cancer? So four simple questions. Now we collected uh, the answers and uh, we, we know that we have materials to work into four directions from the analysis of the answers. Obviously, uh, incentive will go uh, through financial incentive, whether it is push incentive or um, pull incentive, meaning uh, incentive before the development of the drug or after the development of the drug. We have uh, ideas on list of ideas that could be uh, implemented uh, at the financial, uh, the financial level. We also need to, uh, to work on the regulation, existing regulation, uh, whether in the US or, or what we already have in, uh, in Europe, because as also Pamela said, there's in the regulation today a lot of administrative burden, it's not flexible. So that needs to be worked on in, in terms of processes. There's uh, two other important uh, points. Uh, it's cooperation and communication. It's also uh, a deal of uh, better um, cooperate uh, between EMA and academics, between academics and, and pharma, uh, you know, like having uh, meetings before the pediatric uh, investigation plans and uh, a list of ideas of how to better cooperate so that at the end you don't get waivers uh, in, the, in the process. And surprisingly, coming from industry, we also had comments about communication. Uh, it's like, you know, also, uh, there's no awareness about kids' cancer. It's not really known that children and adolescents have cancer. And if we would push more about communication, uh, then the politician, then the public opinion would also be more willing to, uh, to do things. And, and this is also something that we will need to work on at an appropriate time to see how we can push with a communication campaign about, you know, this is what needs to be done now to, uh, to develop drugs for the kids. 
So what are the next steps now? Uh, so as I was telling you, we have a, quite a full of information of materials that now we have to put that into a proposal. How it works at the European Commission, we need to, make a, to write a proposal about the situation today. Uh, why it's not, uh, it's not working, why we don't have specific drugs. We really need to show uh, concrete examples of what is going on and also make some proposals, suggestions, ideas, so that with this paper, uh, the uh, European Commission be interested in it and uh, make a study uh, in the uh, uh, consultation, consultate everyone, so that we can go to a new regulation. Because what we don't want to do there is the European regulation is going to, to be changed in 2017. Maybe going to be changed. So we don't want to wait until, okay, they say at, in 2017, yes, maybe we need to change the law, and then it will be uh, again in months or years before we change the law. So we want to act now and we want to push that process. So that proposal will be uh, mostly written uh, with the parents, with the parents' uh, organization. We had a meeting uh, in uh, Malmo in Sweden last, uh, last week. It's CCI Europe's parents' organization in Europe where actually we, uh, I, spoke about, I spoke about this pediatric platform and what we are going to do. And there are uh, also new parents' organization coming with, uh, with me and my group to, uh, uh, to finalize this proposal. Uh, we'll ask academics also to help us for concrete examples on industry, on the incentive part, and all together we will need to, uh, to finalize something to the, for the European Commission. We need to lobby also uh, at the industry level, at the European level with EFPIA where we have contact and also uh, with the EMA, or the regulators. Uh, we are also, uh, we have a link with the US because uh, Kids V Cancer is a US organization and the president of uh, this organization uh, has co-written Creating Hope Act and she's in my group and we are, you know, it's really good that she's there because she can tell us what's going on in the US and also they are talking about <laughs> adapting that act. Okay, I'm, I'm speedy. <laughs> um, okay, the second, uh, the second thing I wanted to tell you about is uh, funding. Uh, Talking with, uh, with ITCC uh, group, and uh, as I said before, uh, we realized how important it was to be together in Europe to fund some project. We, we first uh, funded Vinilo. Uh, Vinilo was uh, mostly funded in France, but uh, they still needed some uh, money to launch it and also to launch it in other countries. So this is uh, what, uh, what has been done with our funding. Uh, Beacon uh, was uh, one of the, pro there was a project we funded uh, in 2013. It was a co-funding uh, and also we funded the clinical trail plus the functional imaging uh, studies uh, on Beacon. Uh, we had uh, another project on uh, DIP, uh, DIPG, a very aggressive brain, brain tumor where to, today you, ha you don't have any, uh, any treatment uh, to cure the, those kids. Uh, this uh, started in France uh, last year and now uh, seven centers are open in France and we have the next step to open in, in UK, Spain and, and Switzerland. This is a status at January, so maybe I don't have the last update, but um, give you an idea. So globally, it's 1.3 million euro that we allocated to uh, European research for the last three years. And then we said, okay, what are the next steps? And I'm going to finish with that. <laughs> if I can see Cathy. Uh, there we were financing uh, each, you know, clinical trail. That's why. Okay. Uh, and said, okay, that's fine, but what is the strategy? What do we have to do to really cure better and cure more children? Where do we go? Uh, we are happy to, find, to finance a specific clinical trial, but I want to look at the global strategy. 
what do we need to do? What is the program? And if I have the global view, then I can't find any more donors on industry to come and help me fund the project, and maybe also a uh, parents' organization to find the project. So, uh, so Gilles Vassal from ITCC, and he's also the head of SIOP Europe, uh, presented to us recently a global program uh, that will, uh, be, that is, that will benefit to both the children who are refer uh, uh, refractory to treatment from the beginning, like the IPG, where we have Biomed on a bridge project at the European level, more European level, and also the, uh, the kids who, all the kids, a program that will benefit to all the kids who are in relapse or refractory to treatment. It starts with analysis, of the, uh, analysis, analyzing sorry, the biology of the tumor. We have a program in France called MAPI Act. We have one in the UK called Co uh, Comet. Comet. And main, yes. And uh, also uh, other projects like that uh, in, in Europe. So this is good because we're going to have a big database of analysis of the children tumor. That's important to have more knowledge of what is going on. But in front of that, we will need to have clinical trials on, on drugs uh, in order to cure the kids. So that's what the whole program is about. The next, the, in that global program, the next step is going to be is start with eSmart. It's, a, uh, it's specific clinical trial because it will be multi-drug, multi-companies, or multi-tumor European study. And now, what we, so it will be integrated in that, global, uh, in that global program on what we need to do. And it's really the first time I'm talking about this, uh, this, uh, this project that we are really launching now. So what we need to do is finalize the plan with ITCC, value it, meaning what is the part of the funding that is needed per country, because it's European program, uh, will, will some parents' organization uh, come to us and uh, take the lead in their country to, to fund the program? And what we plan is not only for organization to fund the program, but also to go and look at industry, like kids' industry, you know, like clothes for children or food for children or toys, and tell them, you know what, uh, you, uh, you are working, uh, you're Business is for the children come and we have a nice uh, program to fund. Let's do that together and let's, you know, for their image, for their uh, uh, social responsibility and so on. Try to attract the industry to fund that global program. 